tonight on Huckabee. The misconduct has not been limited to a few VA facilities. It's totally unacceptable. Secretary Shinseki offered me his own resignation. With considerable regret, I accept it. Are veterans better off now? House VA Committee Chair Jeff Miller joins the governor tonight. And Hillary Clinton rips Republicans, saying they keep harping on Benghazi for political gain. Mike Pompeo of the House Select Committee on Benghazi responds. Plus, on many college campuses, it is liberals trying to repress conservative ideas. The left's double standard on tolerance. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Mike Huckabee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we've got a great audience here in New York. And we'd like to say welcome to all of you. Welcome to Huckabee from the Fox News studios in New York City. Well, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that my wife and I were celebrating 40 years of marriage, so we took a trip to China. From the Great Wall, the Forbidden City, and Tiananmen Square in Beijing, then the Terracotta Warriors near Xi'an, the stunning skyline of Shanghai, and to the Sichuan province of Shindu. Now, it was there that Janet held and fed a baby panda. And no, I did not bring a real one home for the grandkids. <laughs> I know that many Americans fear that China might get too strong. I've got to confess, I'm not worried that China is going to get too strong. I'm worried that America might be getting too weak. Other nations having a strong economy, that's not bad for the United States. It's one less hungry mouth country wanting us to take care of it and its people. And that's great. So if they have money, maybe they'll buy the things that we innovate and make. We need to fear that we'll quit innovating and making things. And that happens because of excess taxation, regulation, and litigation. It drives the jobs and the money right away from American working men and women. I was stunned that China is becoming more like America used to be, and America is becoming more like China used to be. While America's infrastructure crumbles, China is busy building its roadways, bridges, airports, and utility systems. China is still a communist rule country, and we're still a constitutional republic. But they are allowing more and more free enterprise and personal ownership. And we're watching our own government take away land rights and personal and even religious freedoms at a stunning rate. Look, I don't want what still remains of Chinese communism, but maybe we could loan them our constitution. Doesn't appear that we're using it that much these days anyhow. <laughs> now, We still have some advantages. The Chinese exercise very strict control over the Internet. They block Facebook, YouTube, and a lot of websites, including the New York Times, because they feel like that the New York Times is propaganda. But then <laughs> we've got members of Congress pushing for greater control over the Internet as well. And I'm not sure but what the Chinese might have it right on the New York Times. <laughs> they. Uh, They scrub their history books of moments like the brutal killings of protesters in Tiananmen Square in 1989. Sure, a good thing we don't rewrite our history just to ignore parts of it that aren't politically correct. But then again, have you seen an American history book lately? The Chinese are notorious for spying on its citizens and using the full force of government to monitor its people and minimize dissent and religious expression. Thank God the United States would never do that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but then our government collects our phone calls, web searches, and tracks us, and is systematically scrubbing God from the public square. China's government regulates a whole lot of daily life for its citizens from housing, health care, education, and personal artistic freedom. Even though one can see a lot of personal freedoms in public parks where people can sing, dance, or do Tai Chi, I'm pretty sure that if people use personal amplification devices in New York's Central Park, the strong arm of New York City would stop that. You know, China has a history of dealing harshly with those it perceives as its enemies. Some of them just disappear. We have strict constitutional protections in America that will guarantee civil rights. 
being able to face our accuser, not having our home searched or our property seized without a warrant. Unless, of course, we happen to be a citizen sitting where a drone drops a bomb or fires a missile at us. But that saves the cost of a pesky trial. And sometimes the people that we kill aren't even our enemies. Sometimes they are our veterans who thought that we'd give them protection and health care. They gave us our liberties, and by mistreating them and killing them, we take away theirs. Yeah, I don't fear that China is becoming more like the United States used to be. I fear that America is becoming more like China used to be. VA Secretary Eric Shinseki is out. He resigned Friday after a chorus of voices, including many Democrats, called for Shinseki to be shown the door. On Friday, President Obama accepted Shinseki's resignation, and he named his Deputy Secretary Sloan D. Gibson as the interim replacement. House Speaker John Boehner says the move is not enough. General Shinseki has dedicated his life to our country, and we thank him for his service. His resignation, though, uh, does... Uh, does not absolve the president of his responsibility to step in and make things right for our veterans. A business as usual cannot continue. Joining me now is Chairman of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, Jeff Miller, Congressman from Florida, and by full disclosure, happens to be my Congressman. Congressman, it's great to have you Governor, here today. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, Eric Shinseki resigned. Uh, I, I think that did not come as a big surprise to anybody. The first big thing that happens is a replacement, an interim, Sloan Gibson. Good idea, good man, good future there. Somebody needed to move into the position quickly. Uh, Sloan has not been at the department very long, but he is a good man, and I think that he can at least in this interim period start the process that needs to be done. Uh, there is a lot of confidence that needs to be restored into the Department of Veterans Affairs. I think Sloan can get that started and I talked with him shortly after the president made his announcement and, and if he will transfer the aggravation and the anger that he shared with me as to the way the department in fact has acted, uh, I think that he's going to go a long way to getting the thing started. You know, the president seemed to uh, almost intimate that this was a money problem. We just put more money in this, we could really solve it. Uh, but I think others have suggested this isn't a money issue, it's a management issue. From your I, perspective, tell me what you think really has to be done. Is Governor, it I agree. I mean, it, it is mismanagement and manipulation. Uh, if it was a money issue, this problem would have been solved a long time ago. I mean, we have given record amounts of money over the last decade to the Department of Veterans Affairs. When I came to Congress, the budget was around 60 billion. It's now 150 billion dollars mm. annually. Uh, a lot of that is for health care. Uh, over a third of the budget goes to the provision of health care to veterans. And I don't believe President Obama would be running around the country telling people that he had been giving record amounts of money if it wasn't enough. And they are already going to carry over almost half a billion dollars in health care dollars into the next fiscal year, which makes it all that much more egregious that veterans had to stand in line. Is it possible that we could, uh, even on an emergency basis, give veterans a voucher that they could take into the private health care system, go to hospitals that aren't VA hospitals, and get the treatment that they need and deserve, and do that until the systemic problems of the VA are fixed? That's exactly what needs to be done. All hands on deck. Anybody that's standing in line to get health care at the VA should be able to go out on a fee basis. Uh, process and what's really bad governor is the department has had the ability to do this they've had the money to do that they didn't need anything I mean only in this administration would they make somebody resign that was already retiring in 30 days and then also tout the fact that they're doing something that they should have already been doing so yes allowing veterans to immediately go out that have been waiting in line to receive their health care in non-VA facilities I think is a very important first step you know the president uh, acted like that he really regretted taking the secretary's resignation but the secretary apparently didn't know he was going to resign early yesterday morning when he went and made a speech he gave no indication then a couple of hours later he he's resigned I mean do you buy the whole story that he just up and decided somewhere between the speech and the president's announcement that he was 
he needed to go? No, I think he saw the handwriting on the wall as the numbers began to rise and the calls on Capitol Hill both Republican and Democrat, and some, some pretty substantial Democrats started calling for his resignation. And I'll remind everybody that, you know, in the hearing three weeks ago, where uh, the secretary talked about being a very uh, minor problem within Phoenix, and now we find that it's in probably 60% or more of the facilities out there, that he learned about what was going on from our hearing on April the 9th. Do you think there's a problem in people at the top of organizations? They don't go down to the bottom of the organization and, and walk the halls and listen to people and ask tough questions and, and say to them, look, you can tell me anything you want. Nobody's going to get you in trouble for this. I want to know what's really going on here. Apparently that never happened. Well, and you know, as somebody that had four stars on their shoulder, that had honorable service to this country, and everybody has said that from top to bottom, you would have thought that he would have understood that you have to get out into the field and see what the line personnel are doing and not just rely on those mid-level managers and those people in the central office to tell you the truth. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. The bureaucrats within the system chose not to give him the bad news, chose to cook the books, and unfortunately, the secretary was the one that took the first hit uh, in a process it's going to be a long process and I would predict that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs over this. Uh, Congressman, we, we learned this weekend that uh, the White House has issued a statement. Sergeant Bo Bergdahl has been released from an Afghanistan prison. That's good news and we're happy about that. But in order to get that, five detainees from uh, Getmo had to be released. What's your reaction to the, uh, to the announcement? Well, I would say this. Uh, I participated in Rolling Thunder last weekend, and Bo Bergdahl flags and paraphernalia and bracelets were all over uh, the folks that were there saying, don't forget, this mm -hmm. guy is still being held as a prisoner of war. I'm not one that likes to trade uh, for prisoners, but in this instance, I would think that we probably did do the right thing because as we begin to draw down and leave and another administration uh, goes through an election process in Afghanistan, you know, that I don't know the particulars about who was traded for him, but for his family, uh, I know that it is a welcome piece of news and one that I think America can celebrate that we don't have another POW waiting out there to be released. I think all of us could agree with that, and, and certainly for his family and for him, we're glad that uh, he's going to be able to be released. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Great Thank you, Governor. Great to be with you. Really a pleasure and an honor. Well, is Justina Pelletier closer to coming home to her family? I'm going to update you on the case later in the show. But first, Hillary Clinton accuses Republicans of politicizing the Benghazi attacks in her new book. Republican Congressman Mike Pompeo, who's on the Select Committee on Benghazi, responds when we come back. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show and share with me your thoughts, I welcome your response. Go to my website, MikeHuckabee.com. You can connect with me on Facebook, sign up to follow my regular messages on Twitter, or leave comments on the feedback section at MikeHuckabee.com.